So right here I have the GF66 Katana from MSI, which is a laptop that is supposed to be one of the most affordable proper gaming laptops that is coming out this year. So you shouldn't expect it to do anything really special or to feel really fancy, but it should offer a pretty good experience and just give you a lot of bang for your money. Now this particular model right here comes with a 12th gen i7 12700H processor, an RTX 3060 graphics card, a 16 gigs of DDR4 memory and 144 hertz 1080p display. So this is a very nice combination to aim for if you're looking for something reasonable. But let's check it out and see what MSI put together here. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Corsair and their MP600 Pro LPX SSD. This high-performance Gen 4 SSD offers read speeds of up to 7100 megabytes per second and it comes with a nice low-profile heatsink, making it a perfect fit for your PlayStation 5 as well as your PC. It is available in several capacities, going up to 4 terabytes, and it comes with a comfortable 5-year-long warranty. Check it out using the links in the description below. On the outside, this is a pretty basic laptop that is largely made of plastic, but I think it actually feels alright. It doesn't really compare to a full metal chassis, but it is sturdy enough, it shows fingerprints a bit less, and it just gets the job done. Uh, there's definitely a bit of flex if you really press it, but not more than some other laptops in the same class. Uh, the design is pretty simple and clean, and even though it has pretty sizable exhaust openings in the back, the overall feel is isn't too gamey and it could easily pass as an office machine. It is fairly portable for a 15 inch gaming laptop with a weight of just a little bit over two kilos and the charging brick isn't as large as some older laptops had. And even though some higher end models will be able to use a compact USB charger on the go, this laptop will not. So you will have to bring this brick with you wherever you go. Now you can open it with one hand and inside there's some typical bezels with a webcam up top and a keyboard with red highlights that that lights up red when you turn it on. The hinges seem sturdy and all right, but again, they are nothing too special and I would be at least a little bit careful when using it. The keyboard itself is quite nice considering this is a budget gaming laptop. Uh, there's a good amount of travel and while typing or while gaming, it offers an experience that is very similar to more expensive models. Uh, there's a bit of flex as well if you press hard on it, but again, nothing that will get in the way of the regular use. I really do appreciate that they added the numpad, even though it is quite small, uh, but I'm not really sold on the red highlights here. It just feels a bit old school and it would be even more elegant if they went with something that is a bit more neutral, in my opinion. Now the touchpad, on the other hand, is pretty basic. Uh, it's a bit on the small side, given all the space that it has around it, and it is not as smooth as on the Aorus 15P or the SCAR 15, but to be honest, I don't mind when they cut corners on a touchpad. Uh, most people that buy a gaming laptop will use a mouse most of the time, and for that incidental use, this touchpad will still be good enough. Now, when it comes to connections, uh, on the left side you get the power connector, a 5 gigabit USB Type-A port, and a slower USB 2 port. Uh, there is nothing on the back, and on the right side you get a combined audio jack, another 5 gigabit Type-A port, a 5 gigabit Type-C port, an HDMI out, and a network connector. So this laptop is missing some modern connections like the Thunderbolt or a 10 gigabit USB port, and the HDMI port is limited to 4K60, so it's an HDMI 2.0, but again, MSI had to cut costs somewhere and this way isn't that bad either. Uh, I do like that you get three type A ports and two of them on the left side so you shouldn't have many cables interfering with your mouse on your right hand side. Now the internet connection is on the right but it's kind of all the way in the back so it will be out of the way as well. But let's check the performance of this thing. And when we look at the CPU performance, uh, this laptop comes with an i7 12700H that has six P cores and eight E cores with a total of 20 threads, uh, which is the same as the i9 12900H. And just like the other high-end Alder Lake laptops, this one performs very well. Uh, in the Extreme Profile, which offers the best CPU performance, uh, it runs at around 80 watts and shows some really good multi-threaded performance. Uh, it beats the 11th gen Intel 
chip or any 5000 series AMD laptop, and it's not even too far away from the 12900H that is in the ROG SCAR and that is running at 115 watts. So it is very capable to run all kinds of CPU intensive applications. And single core performance looks very good too, which should definitely help in games. But most games rely on the GPU more than on the CPU, and this laptop comes with a 105 watt RTX 3060, even though in reality it mostly runs at 80 to 90 watts and only hits 105 from time to time. Still, I think 3060 is a great GPU to aim for. A 1650 and a 3050 can struggle a bit with some recent titles on higher settings, but a 3060 like this one will run any game easily on high or even higher, uh, and even though there are still a few games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Dying Light 2 for example that do push this car to its limits but then you can just turn on DLSS and still get really good frame rates. Unfortunately they did not include a MUX switch so laptops that do have one will be a little bit faster especially in those games that run really high FPS so if you find a laptop with a similar price that has one it will perform better. And when it comes to the display, uh, this 144Hz 1080p screen is pretty entry level. It is not completely terrible, but it doesn't really come close to the 240Hz panels that just outperform it in every way. Now, motion clarity isn't that great, but it would be better than the 60Hz laptops for those fast paced games. And I would say more expensive laptops will generally get you a smoother gaming experience, but this one is focusing on value more than anything else. Now, next to that, the maximum brightness is also pretty low, uh, coming in at 247 nits, and that will be fine indoors, but if you sit somewhere with a lot of direct sunlight, it will be pretty hard to see anything. Uh, the color range is pretty limited too, with around 58% of sRGB coverage, so you shouldn't really do any color critical work on this laptop, which is also kind of fitting when you're going for a more affordable option. Uh, contrast isn't that bad, and there is enough color color to enjoy your games and get some work done, so it kind of gets the job done, but you shouldn't expect more than that. Uh, you get several performance profiles that you can choose from, uh, and the results we've seen so far were all in the extreme mode that did give some reasonable-ish thermals. So 90 degrees on the CPU is still pretty warm, but it is way better than the high 90s that some earlier models had. And 71 Celsius on the GPU is completely fine, though it does run pretty loud in that mode, and I warmly suggest to put on a headset if you plan to game in this mode. Uh, the balance mode uh, was a bit odd, in my opinion. So it reduces the fan speed by a lot, but it doesn't really tune down the total power consumption. So both the CPU and the GPU get even hotter. So 87 degrees on an NVIDIA GPU is pretty high and 95 degrees on the CPU is not that ideal either. So even though the balance mode runs quieter, I am not comfortable with those numbers. And I think the extreme mode will be the most sensible for gaming. In a pure CPU stress test, uh, in the extreme mode, the CPU goes up to 80 watts of power and runs pretty hot as well. But then in balance mode, the CPU drops to a maximum of 38 watts and only hits 69 degrees. Again, I would kind of prefer to see the balance mode push a bit more power there, uh, with the temperature target being somewhere in the 80s. In any case, I think MSI should definitely work on this profile tuning. A bit more. It is not very hard to open it up for maintenance, but you do have to be really careful not to break any clips while doing it. Uh, you can easily upgrade the memory, you can clean the fans, you can replace the battery, uh, you can also replace the Wi-Fi chip, but they are using Wi-Fi 6, so you don't really have to do that just yet. Uh, you can also add a second SSD or replace the current one. Uh, since this model only comes with a 500 gigabyte SSD, I really think you should consider doing that. Uh, even though the one they're using is performing well enough, it's still very small. In terms of battery, the GF66 is definitely a mid-range-ish gaming laptop. Uh, you get around three hours of productivity or around five hours of watching Netflix. Now, you could stretch that a bit further if you're just doing a bit of typing, but this is definitely not an all day on a battery kind of machine. I did notice that when you swap to the super battery mode, it still kept the display at 144 Hertz instead of dropping it to 60, which would 
also improve the battery life. So that is definitely something that they should implement in a future update. Uh, when it comes to the webcam, it is much better than I expected it to be, but mostly because most gaming laptops have pretty disappointing webcams. Uh, it is not exceptional, but it will be more than good enough for the occasional work or the occasional school meeting. Hi there, so this is the test of the camera and of the microphone of the uh, GF66F from MSI and yeah, it actually looks pretty okay. I expected less, so that is always a good thing, right? And the speakers kind of fall into the same category, so they're not too bad for an entry-level gaming laptop with plenty of volume and an okay-ish quality but they're missing a bit of bass and on higher volumes it does get pretty rough, so they're okay but I would still use a headset. So clearly, MSI did cut quite a few corners here to make it into one of the cheapest options on the market with pretty decent specs, uh, just like they did with all their GF models so far, and that seems to be working quite well. So here in the Netherlands, uh, the GF was one of the first models that popped up if I said I wanted a laptop that had at least a 3060. But, that also means that you will have to settle for some things here as well. Uh, it's not the quietest gaming laptop, it doesn't have uh, new fancy connections, uh, the touchpad isn't that great, and it doesn't have an amazing display. The display isn't very bright, it is not really fast, and it's not really able to do proper color work. So there is definitely a lot of things to take in here, and there are definitely reasons uh, why you might want to spend a tiny bit more to go for something a bit better. But if you cannot or you don't want to, I think this is still a very, very good value option. It looks and feels all right, the keyboard is very nice to work with, and it's easy to clean and to upgrade, and it actually performs really well. So if you just want something that can run uh, all the latest games without spending too much money, I think this is definitely worth checking out. That's it. Now, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really hope that this video was helpful. Uh, please do consider subscribing to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one. I do my best to post at least a couple every single week. Now, bye all and see you in the next one.